So, as we've already explaining, this is the uh, stomach which we have. Consider in this point, we have an ulcer, and this is what we used to term it as a duodenal ulcer. And in this case, we have to treat this particular patient. But before this me mechanism, we have to know what is how the gastric acid is going to be secreted out. So, from this this diagram which we have already explained here, histamine, the primary neurotransmitter, which is the most important stimulator of H plus K plus ATPase pump. And this H plus K plus ATPase pump in turn is going to produce gastric acid. Apart from that, what are the other factors which is stimulating the secretion of gastric acid? One, histamine, fantastic. The next one, we have acetylcholine and we have gastrin. But apart from that, here we have written SST that is somatostatin. Somatostatin has got the opposite response. It is going to decrease the secretion of the gastric acid. But so uh, what are the different drugs which we have? We can block all these different receptors. Apart from that, the parent drug which we have, we have explained about uh, prazole drugs, the parent drug which tend to inhibit this H plus K plus ATPase pump are your prazole drugs. So this prazole drugs can be given for a particular duodenal ulcer patient up to a maximum of six weeks. But even after that, if the patient tends to have the symptoms, the next step which we have to have is to have a surgeon's opinion. And that's what I request uh, Dr. Rajamahindra sir to come and uh, show some light on how to manage this particular case. Thank you, Nurisha. Uh, I'm happy to see you on the platform here. So now I'm going to tell you a patient which is not who is not responding to four six weeks of PPA, a patient who is not responding for six weeks of PPA, we call them as intractable duodenal ulcer. So this patient is having an intractable duodenal ulcer, not responding for more than six weeks. We have to rule out the various causes of intractable duodenal ulcer and we have to go for surgical treatment in such cases. We have two options. One is to cut the vagus nerve. This is the vagus nerve anatomy shown here. So we have to cut the vagus nerve at the level of trunk here. We have to cut the vagus nerve at the trunk. When you cut the vagus nerve at the trunk, these are the small, small branches which are going to supply the parietal cells which are having the proton pump. These are the parietal cells everywhere. So these parietal cells more in the antrum, they are going to produce the acid. We are going to do trunkal vagotomy, all this acid will be stopped, then the ulcer will heal. So another treatment is instead of doing a trunkal vagotomy, we can cut only the small branches. This surgery is known as high selective vagotomy. So we are going to discuss the surgical points related to the complications, all those things in the upcoming session. Thank you.